let me show you the basics of the dart. I'm going to show you an easy way to transfer markings like darts on a double layer. I'm sticking my pins in the little junction points where I would want my markings. And then you just fold up between the layers. See, this is my right side, here's my wrong side. I'm doing this one-handed, let's see if I can do it. So if I pull this up, look, I can see the pin and I can actually transfer the marking boop, 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 on each end very carefully. Boop, boop. And you can actually, I like to do it like this where they're touching and then just do a tiny little mark. And now those markings have been transferred. I'm gonna come over and do this leg the same way. Okay, I've pulled my pins out and there are the markings for both darts. Now I'm ready to take my tiny little ruler and I can line it up and just draw my lines on. On, on anything that I feel like I can get away with it, I draw my leg darts. Um, I just think it makes it much more accurate when you go to the sewing machine. And there's my little leg darts. We're going to sew a simple little dart. I've already transferred my markings. You want to transfer the point and the two legs, and I have traced on the back side of the fabric in pencil. I put a pin exactly in the end, and I'm going to lay the legs on top of each other and line them up. All right, I've pulled my pin out. I've got it lined up with my legs right on top of each other. You can put a pin in it. In it, you should put a pin in it actually because you do not want those to slip because it will change the fit. I've sunk my needle right in that tip. Now, if you have a lightweight fabric, do not back stitch at the tip of your dart. You want to tie those off. Um, and if you have a heavier weight fabric like this, this is just a nice um, cotton, like a quilter's cotton, you can back stitch. So, I'm going to go ahead and just start stitching. I did not back stitch, and you can see since I have drawn my lines on, and I recommend this for beginning sewists. It makes it very easy to line that up and keep it perfectly straight. And then when we get to the end, we backstitch. And now, pull it off. There's my dart. And I'm ready to tie my little thread, so let me show you how to do that. So I've got my two little threads here overlapped and we're going to just pull those tight and do it again just like you would tie any little knot. When you go to press a dart, it presses down if it's a side bust dart. So this one is going to press down. These that are waistline darts will press towards the side seam. If it's a skirt dart, press towards the side seam in the front and in the back, press towards the center back. So your darts will be pressing towards center back. Everything is flowing towards the center back. Here we are with a finished little tiny bust line dart. And make sure when you're pressing, I'm gonna just flip this over to show, you wanna get your um, tip of your iron right at that point and make sure that it's nice and flat. Press everything while I'm here so that when you turn it over, you have no little pleats or puckers. See how nice and smooth that is? And now it needs a little haircut, and I'll go on and do my other darts. Now I'm going to show you the what not to do dart. This is a dart that we didn't meet close enough at the, up at the tip. At our dart point. Darts should point at the bus line, so if you're point of your dart does not point to your bust point, you're in trouble. So let me just show you how far away, here it is. See how it's not quite to the point? Our dart has like a little pleat at the end and it will not lay flat. Can you see that little pleat? That's a no-no. Will never lay flat. You'll always have a little pucker right there. This one is sewn all the way to the tip, right along the edge, and it lays nice and flat. Okay, those are my little sample ones. All right, I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the actual little piece. 